Internet, good morning. My name is Magnitude, and it's been a little while for a video. Eventually, I'll be playing video games again. Eventually, I'll be uploading video games again. But I wanted to make a video. One, I just wanted to make a video. It's been a while. Two, explain what's going on to the 11 people that still give a shit about my existence on the internet. And three, to tell you what I've been up to. Uh, I I do enjoy making these videos where I just kind of sit and talk. I would love to do a podcast. Uh, Ryan, we got to get together for that, man. Sundays, let's go. Hit me up on Discord. I was waiting for you that one time, and I'm sure you're waiting for me that one time. And then we both just went, ah, fuck it, this guy's never going to contact me. And we both did that one thing that the two characters in rom-coms do, and they never fucking reach out to each other, so the misunderstanding never gets resolved. Fix your shit! Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, was he in a rom-com? Probably, I'm sure he was. Reese Witherspoon, I'm sure she was in one of those zany, zany situations where, you know, the, 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 her love interest was in a, uh, um, uh, a situation that, from the outside, appeared like it could have been something way more than it was, but it actually wasn't, and instead of talking about this thing, these two characters just had this weird dynamic, the whole movie, where the guy never actually explained what he was going on, he just wasted all his time going, wait, I can explain, then watched her fucking leave. Don't do that. Don't, I'm not doing that. We're not doing that, Ryan. So let's, ex- I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about what's going on, what I've been up to, what I've been doing, stuff of that nature. I like having my own podcast. I like talking about stuff. I, you know, I want to do stand up at one point. You know, I still kind of want to do stand up to some degree, uh, but just making it like a, a career has got to be so grueling and so fucking like how many, how many comedians that you've never heard of? Uh, do you see on like random Netflix specials and stuff like that that are traveling all around, probably for pennies, you know, leaving their families and they're just hoping and praying that they can, you know, blow up, get that HBO thing or, you know, they're like, they have some, you know, 15 minute set on some Netflix show that's got 41 comics on it. So, and trying to make it so tough, I, I don't, I, I want, you know, I, I want to tell jokes. I, I, you know, you stand up every now and again locally just kind of open mic stuff that just that's enough for me right now that's me honestly uh i think i uh so over time i've kind of learned that um when i rant i'm kind of funny so i play up my rants and i get put more energy into my rants so people kind of find them funny but it could be things that i'm genuinely frustrated about so doing stand up about that i usually don't have a set in mind i just kind of think about things that have pissed me off lately and then I talk about them and you know it's healthy for me it's a nice release for me and the, then you know if the crowd enjoys it great if not fuck them who cares they're not paying to see me they're, they're you know whatever I'm just I'm just I got way more balls than they do going up on stage they're just they're just these fucking assholes just sitting in an open mic uh, you know crowd heckling people doing things they would never dream of doing because the last time they took a risk it they ended up married with two kids at 43 making 17 dollars an hour and they cannot stand their wife they resent their wife so much because she makes so much more money than him and he was raised in the generation where men should be taking care of women so he hates himself for that but he can't bring himself to hate his wife as much as he hates himself uh, so eventually he ends up uh, hanging himself at 55 and in, in his closet, and no one understands why. Except me. I understand why. You should hire me to investigate these things. Obviously, I have a sense for that. So I wanted to stand. Uh, that's just kind of, that's usually what I, I just kind of, like, I didn't plan any of that, right? I just kind of went off on a stupid tangent that I thought might be funny. And if it's funny, great. If it's not, like I said, fuck them. Who cares? You know, not not every at-bat ends up in a home run. But you got to take the at-bats to have opportunity to hit home runs. You know what I'm saying? You can apply that to a lot of different aspects in life. So it's been four minutes, and I actually haven't gotten to any point of this video. And that's, you know, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that's that's kind of par for the course. So... What have I been up to? Uh, for those following me on Twitter, you will know three things have taken place. One, uh, I was making a video about Verlicify that no longer is being made or uploaded or done. Two, my computer or laptop crashed. And three, I've been coding a lot lately. So we'll explore each of those in out of that order. We'll go with one. The Verlicify video, uh, actually I did finish it and it was about 28 minutes. And I, I put, actually, I put a significant amount of work into it. I'm, uh, I can't tell if I'm upset or not about it. I put a lot of work into stuff. I've been learning uh, that the feeling that I get when I tell people I'm doing a task, like a, a monumental kind of a task, uh, gives me kind of the same endorphins as me doing the task. So 
Uh, things that I'm really kind of excited about and, and doing, I try now not to tell people because then that feeling of me of me go, uh, the feeling that I get when people go, oh man, that's cool, I can't wait for it, is enough for me to go, yeah, you know what, I got the feeling I was looking for, I think I'm good. Uh, it's like a, it's a psychological thing. It, I mean, that definitely exists, that phenomenon, because I uh, go through it. So uh, I try not to tell you about the bigger things. I think. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know I have this whole fucking list of stuff that I wanted to do and create and make and never did. Because the feeling I got, I think, of just kind of coming up with the idea was enough for me. So uh, I worked actually pretty hard on that video. I came up with a trailer uh, for it of stuff that I had filmed. And then when it came down, I had a release date because I wanted to get it done. And then I, I, I pre-uploaded it about, a, my excitement got the better of me. I pre-uploaded it about a, a week early. And I had it wait, you know, pending on, uh, on unlisted, scheduled, ready to go. And then it got copywritten. Or it got, like, taken down for a violation. And it had, like, 25 views, which is odd. It was an unlisted video. I was talking to Dan about it. It was, like, a 5 gigabyte file, too. So, like, I do most of my uploading off of my mobile hotspot. That took a fucking long-ass time to upload. Because I could, then, you know, couldn't leave that. I had to, I couldn't leave that spot. Because, uh, you know, if my connection t- from my phone, because I have a USB hotspot on my laptop. Uh, so if my connection... You know, if it fucking gets off a little bit, off kilter, and the the wire kind of comes out a little bit, and the whole phone disconnects, and I got the whole the connection gets lost, and so that took that took a, it, it took a significant amount of time to upload. But then it got it got taken down for violating some. It wasn't copyright. It might have been. Uh, I'll have to find the screenshot. I had this plays into it too. Um, I'll have to find that screenshot. But it got taken down. It had like twenty five views on it. I didn't share it with anybody. So I don't know how that could have happened. Um, they're speculating that somehow Relicify found it and fucking got it flagged somehow. I don't know. If, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if... Um, so I think I didn't give the link to anybody. I didn't... I, I, so I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want it to... I wanted to, you know, have a premiere for it, like the YouTube premieres. I wanted to come out with a video. I wanted to have a super hype thing. And then it got taken down. And I, like, I, I got a strike on my channel for an unlisted video, which is unreal. And I'm like, well, I don't want that to, I, if I get another one of those, my channel is doo-doo. It's gone. Uh, so then I know, I know um, yeah, I was talking to Dan about it. Because I was like, Dan, you know, I had an unlisted video that got, that got taken down for violating a policy. Have you ever heard of it before? And he's like, no. So... Uh, I didn't really explore it too much because I was like, honestly, getting a strike on my channel was kind of terrifying. I mean, not like scary, but, like unsettling. Uh, because I, you know, I always want to do YouTube. I got, I took like a two month break and I haven't done uploaded videos. I have not been uploading videos that I like started with. You know, like I started doing a like, gaming videos and now it's slowly just become like me talking over Call of Duty and stuff on my game. And it, it's changed, but I still want to have that that place and I want to have. You know, I like this channel. It's just great. I mean, you know, I'm not worried about growing the channel unorganically. If it grows, great. You know, but whatever. Uh, so I was kind of like tossing the idea around for a while on what I wanted to do. And then all like the pedophile stuff started coming out with people. And like the, uh, just the, yeah, the pedophile stuff. I just, the pedophile stuff. It all started coming out. And I kind of made a decision there, like, this community does not need more stupid negativity on top of, like, a serious issue. Like, this is a serious... Like, people's lives have legitimately been and are legitimately being affected uh, by what these people are doing. And I just don't think that me adding this dumb 28-minute joke, uh, that's only going to... I mean, I was fully prepared for it to start more negativity when I had the idea for the video and started making the video. I was fully prepared for that, but in my mind, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You know, I, I don't really talk with people in this community much anymore. I don't really exist in this community much anymore. I don't give a fuck what Vlissvi says. I don't give a fuck what his fucking fans say. I'm going to do this shit because it's going to be funny. But as funny as it was, I just really don't think at this point it's worth even doing. Um, so I wasted a lot of time doing that. Uh, <laughs> a lot of time doing that. But I think it made me grow as a person. And, you know... I could put that little last segment there at the end of any of my videos. You know, you watch like a 22-minute you know, plot arc. Is, you know, the episode opens. There's some sunlight beaming down, some birds going. I, 
I wake up and uh, immediately I expose my flaw to the audience. And then, uh, you know, some trial and tribulation happens over the episode and I, I kind of deal with that flaw. I, I understand what that flaw is. I take ownership of that flaw and I learn how to deal with that flaw or make that flaw into a, a net positive in my life. At the end of that video, I put that clip. Wasted a lot of time, but I learned something about myself. So uh, we just didn't need negativity. You know, we have we had a, a problem with people's you know live, lives. They're being uh, negatively affected. And um, for better, like, not for better, uh, I was, I was going to say for better or worse destroyed, but the phrase I didn't want to use is for better or worse, I wanted to say for like all intents and purposes destroyed. That's what I meant to say. And it's just, it didn't need to add my stupid joke in there, just adding fuel to a fire that was real. I was just going to be pouring, ga I was, I was pretty, it was pretty much akin to a gated community on fire, uh, and then me walking around with uh, like a, a, a bottle of lighter fluid and just walking by and going, and then, and then leaving. You know, I wasn't helping the community at all. All I was doing was adding more problems to an already divided community, and that didn't need to be done. Uh, so I don't know if that video will ever see the light of day uh, for the following reason. My laptop got destroyed. It went poopy. And if you follow me, on, again, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen the pictures from my laptop, the, the hard drive. <sighs> yeah, I'm still actually trying to fix it. I ended up getting a new laptop, but I'm still, it's at home. I'm trying to fix it. I don't know. I'm trying to Google problems. It's been a process because it's it's my computer isn't detecting any any hardware problems when I when I check them, but it's definitely got to be a hardware problem somewhere because even when I'm not, I was I'm running Windows on it, but I'm getting errors that don't really. It's so hard to explain. It's been a process. I'm, the point is everything that I've had on that computer, um, I it's it's no moss, no more. So that's also why I haven't been uploading videos in a while because. All of my video templates and stuff were all on that computer, and they're all, you know, lost, I guess. So uh, it was taking me a while to kind of get the motivation to download everything again. I have to remake all of the presets that I made whenever I made videos. Before I'd make a video, I would just drag the thing into Premiere, I'd have a preset for it, and it'd be done. But now i got to download all of my fucking templates again and find them and make everything. And just, I didn't want to do that. So I'm putting that out for a while. Uh, but with that laptop dying, so does so is that Blissify video. Because no, it's too big to fit my free Google Drive uh, unzipped. So I have to zip it. But then, uh, what there was a problem that I encountered. I can't, it, it was still around like a 3.5 gigabyte file zipped. And I'm like, fuck. It took me forever to upload this video to YouTube. I gotta upload. Obviously, it's not as big as the original file. But like I was like, I don't want to do this shit right now. So it's still on my computer somewhere. Well, not somewhere. I know, I know where it is. But it's just, you know, I, one of the reasons why it might not see the light of day. Is just because I don't, you know, I won't, I don't know if I'll ever be, uh, if I'll ever want to put that out there. But you just give it, now, it's just become more and more personal now, uh, this community. I remember back when I started, 2007, I started doing this for 12 years. It was about battling. And then there was a time period where it was like, I would like, I was a child, right? Where I would talk shit about my, people would talk shit about their battling skills. And that's what it was. We were like living in a fucking anime. We would just go around talking how good we were at Pokemon and Wi-Fi battling. And that's the extent of it. It never got to like, Hey, this person was like a sexual predator. Never got that way. So things are more serious now. Well, that means more people now. It's more personal. It's more platforms. More access to people. So I, there wasn't like a Twitter when I started. You know what? There might have been a Twitter when I started. I remember. I remember this gentleman named Ark Abzol was one of my first like, internet friends in this community. Um, I don't even know if it was this community when I first before like. So my high, my timeline goes. I started playing. I got Digimon, MMO, and Korean. And then I started uploading Pokemon battles so I can show them my Pokemon battles. And then it sort of evolved into what it was. Uh, so I remember I met this dude, Ark Abzol, and he told me about Twitter. And it was super new. And I literally remember going, I was typing in the Zat chat. I, remember, I literally remember going, so this is like Facebook minus everything but the status. This seems stupid. Whoops, I could have fucking grabbed Twitter.com slash Steve right there. But I didn't because I'm a fucking moron who didn't believe in the future. That's why. Believe in the future. That's all I'm saying been a while where are they going with that i don't know but um i got a new phone and i got a, one of those smart watches now i had a point about my new phone earlier that i don't re quite remember what it was something something i had a new phone so i couldn't do so i don't know i had something on my phone that i probably had on there i wanted to share but can't because i have a new phone i'm not sure if i would think of it. it doesn't matter but now we'll talk about so uh so i got a new laptop and i just my motivation to make videos because i had to make everything again like 
when I went to go stream Smash Brothers for the first time, my new laptop, I was like, oh shit, it's right, I have to fucking remake everything that I did and reset up all my stream and all that, and it was just a nightmare. So, oh, because time is not something that I have a lot of. I mean, we all have the same amount of time, but, you know, time that I can use to... Anyway, so now I'm going to talk about this game dev stuff. Uh, so I was able to release the game on iPhone and Android, and uh, for all intents and purposes, it's... So far, it's solid. Uh, the errors only really exist with connection-wise. There's some glitches that i got to fix by the game, but uh, I've been very open, and I still am very open about this game exists purely as a form of me learning how to make games so I can make the games that I want to make. I've been Actually, it's been about a year I've been doing game dev. I think June is like when I first like downloaded Unity and I first started going at it. And honestly, like I didn't think an uh, uh, infinite shooter would take me so long, but uh, well, one, there were periods where I just did not work on it for weeks at a time. But two, you know, I've been learning stuff, so I'm very comfortable with Unity now. And uh, I'm able to use Unity in a lot of capacities. So I can see myself really kind of going forward with this. Uh, but i got to obviously have money to pay the people that are good at things I'm not good at, like graphics and animations and things like that. So before I really start to delve into the project that I want to make, uh, i got to raise money somehow. Uh, no, this is not a fundraising video. I've done enough fundraising in my time here. I have, you know, Patreons if you want to be part of that. I got some in-game purchases. If you play Nimble Nimbus, my game, and you want to support the support me that way, you can, you know, buy a dollar's worth of gems or five dollars worth of gems or whatever. That's fine as well, but, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'll have some Nimble Nimbus stuff. I'll always be updating that, I think, very slowly because it's, you know, it's my first game. And whenever I want to implement a new feature or a feature in the game that I want to make, I'll probably do something with Nimble Nimbus first, even though that game is fucking... The coding in that game is just a fucking spider web of, of... It's a maze. It's a maze. But it's a maze because this is how I built the, the game. I go, okay, I want to add this component. And I would go, how do I, how do, I do this component? So I build this component. And I go, how do I add this component? I didn't build the components together so they could work with each other. I just make the next component work with all the other ones. And it's just fucking interweaving. It's a maze. It is. It's a maze. So navigating it is, is, is just... Yeah. And I had to re I, I coded the whole thing to fix it, but it's happening again. So uh, I don't want that to happen with the game that I really want to make and the games I really want to make. So I'm using Nimble Nimbus, and it's still very openly a testing ground for me. Um, you know, I've tested like a, a very basic skill trees in Nimble Nimbus, and that's you know I'm gonna probably have the same kind of structure in the game I want to make. Uh, I'm gonna start doing level up rewards. I have like an online shop, equipment, stuff like that. So uh, it's allowing me to pretty much get good at uh, coding without making, without having all these mistakes in a in a game that I want to make. So I mean, it's you know I'm enjoying Nimble Nimbus. I'm enjoying the ride. It's fun. It, I've been learned so much, and I have a product that I can show people, and I've made a dollar off of it in ads. So. You know, it's more than zero. That's one of my phrases. I go, well, as long as what you're getting you nets you more than zero, it's positive, right? It's all about how you look at it. So I'm going to be fundraising, and I'm doing that. I'll make, I'm doing a cryptocurrency project. So I have to learn a whole other language, uh, Solidity, which is great. It's been, I've been warning it for like a month, and it's just so difficult. Compiling is tough. You've got to recompile new contracts and then get new contract addresses, and it's it's nightmare. So, I'm, but I'm integrating it with Unity, and that is fucking tough because I'm trying to Google. So, there's there is one library that exists uh, that works with Solidity in Unity called Ethereum. Uh, it is not a very popular or old thing. There are not a lot of people doing this. So, a lot of people that make apps that use cryptocurrency. Uh, make smart contracts and then do it in JavaScript. I'm trying to do it in Unity so I can make like games using cryptocurrency way more. Um, so I, I'm using a game engine to make games as opposed to a scripting language to make games. So I think I'll have a uh, way better chance at making a better game than you know the ones that are out there because I'm integrating an actual game engine. It's not easy. It is not, and it is the, exemplified by the fact that all the problems that I have, I'm trying to Google. There are not there are cases where there's nobody else who's had that problem yet because it's such a new language. I think I was on Twitter. I googled so the library's name is Ethereum. I'm trying to learn uh, things called DTO types, which is uh, it's like a DTO type, and then it outputs certain functions from uh, a smart contract we have the address for. I uh, so I googled Ethereum. Do it, Ethereum DTO type. Two results. And one of them uh, is a document uh, is documentation that is not at all what I need because if you'll notice when you Google them, it'll have an Ethereum, and then it'll say but does not include DTO type. What the fuck is that? 
so I'm literally just trying to solve these problems now uh, on my own, which is tough to do, but I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, slowly but surely. So I think, uh, I would say about a month's time, I'll probably have an up and running cryptocurrency project that'll allow for fundraising and that way I can pay people because I don't like getting graphics and stuff for free. Um, especially if they're my friends. Uh, it's even more so if they're my friends. I want to like support my friends and what they do. I want to be able to support my, support my friends because uh, I guess, uh, A, you know, supporting my friends gives me that warm, fuzzy feel inside. But B, uh, I would want my friends to support me also. So you got to be what you want to see in the world. You can't just give nothing and expect something back. That's not how that works. You're, just, you're not going to get what you expect, I promise you. So uh, I'm working on this cryptocurrency project, and it'll raise money just by people using it. It'll never, um, you know, there will be like... People can donate, you know, cryptocurrency to me, to, to their donation. But the, the, the whole thing, the, it'll never run on, on what people are donating. It'll always, always run on just self-existing. And then, you know, I can make some money that way. And then I can use that money to help uh, fund me making the games that I want to make. Because I want to make, I keep talking about, like, using that game I want to make. It's, it's, you know, it's this monster-based RPG, tower defense, like, seven other game hybrid that I want to make. But, you know, I got to have the money to start. Because I could start it now, but... You know, I, I want to make sure that when I do start it, I can, uh, you know, I can hit the ground running and I don't run into... Pa I think that's why I didn't do a lot with Nimble Nimbus. I took like weeks off at a time because I was just so unmotivated because it looked like shit because I was making the graphics. And I was like, I don't want to look at this fucking trash. So that's what my wife says all the time when she rolls over and she's like, I don't want to look at this fucking trash. That's what happens when you marry a bird. I'm the bird. I got this giant nose, long as a wingspan, and I can fly in the air. Anyway, so that's kind of what I've been up to. That's been about it. Uh, if you've watched the video, fantastic. Really great. If you didn't, I, I get it. Why would you? There's so many better videos on the internet that you could be watching right now that other content creators that you follow have probably have come out with that you haven't watched yet. Why would you choose my video where there's a camera with a dude speaking over a video someone spent a lot of time on with gameplay and editing and graphics and all that? So, you know, I get it, right? But if you did, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and I know what's been going on. I'm going to try to upload one video a week. Uh, I don't know what that's going to be like. I'm coding a lot. It's just been coding nonstop pretty much. I'm coding a lot. I'm trying to make this a reality. I've been working a year with no real, uh, it's not a lot. It's been no real monetary result. I've only put money into stuff, but I'm learning a lot. So I have the potential and I'm building the, building the, the blocks to get there. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day.